because life, success, happiness, joy, peace, all of those things, they're not difficult. We make them difficult. Today, we're gonna to talk about the seven tips to be more disciplined, because if you can be more disciplined with what you have and everything that's around you in your life, the more that you can get yourself to do what needs to be done, and when you do what needs to be done, you create the life that you want. So let's talk about discipline before we dive into it. So the easiest way to think of it, where when you look at discipline, what exactly is discipline? Because what discipline means to me might be different than what it means to you. I guess it could be a little bit depending on who the person is, you can see discipline as a bad connotation, right? Like if, if a child is bad, you discipline that child. That's a bad connotation for discipline. But for me, I don't see it as a bad connotation. I see it as a prerequisite to get the life that I want. Simply put, the way that I see it is being able to take action even when you don't feel like it. That's it. Just take action regardless of how you feel. That's it. There's, there's nothing else to it. It's feeling the resistance of your mind, of your body, of your life, of your external circumstances, internal circumstances, whatever it is. It's feeling that resistance of, I don't want to do this, but then leaning into it and doing it anyways, doing it regardless of how you feel. You know, it's the, it's, it's following what the mind tells it to do versus the body. Cause sometimes the body's like, well, I'm exhausted. You know, the mind knows what you need to do to get stuff done, but there's a disconnect somewhere in there. There's a disconnect of the body doesn't want to do it, or you're thinking the wrong thoughts. So it's about connecting to what needs to be done and doing it versus knowing what needs to be done, sitting on the couch, hanging out, looking on Instagram, and then feeling like crap about yourself because you didn't do anything. So let's go through the seven tips right now. So number one, this is super important one that I tell a lot of people that I've coached over the years is if you're unmotivated, if you're not taking action, if you're not disciplined, you need to start focusing on the opportunity and not the obligation. So what does that mean? You need to stop looking at the obligation that's in front of you. You need to start looking at the opportunity. So a good example would be, let's say that you want to make $100,000 a year for your first time in sales. And the reason why you want to make $100,000 for the year is because you want to buy your family a home so that your children can have a backyard and be in a good part of town and get a great education and get out of the neighborhood that you're in. That's a beautiful thing to be able to think of that. That's the opportunity. The obligation is that you've got to sit down and make 50 cold calls today, maybe. So instead of looking at the obligation of, damn it, I've got to sit down. I've got to make 50 phone calls. I don't want to make 50 phone calls. You look at it and go, when I make these 50 phone calls, it'll get me one step closer to my children having a safe environment that they can grow up in with a better education. If you think about that, the opportunity and not the obligation, the 50 phone calls, don't you think that you'd be more motivated to make those 50 phone calls? So if you're not disciplined to take the action that you need to, to create the life that you need to, it's probably because you're focusing on the obligation that's in front of you versus the opportunity that you get. For me, I'll be honest with you. I've said this many times. When I sit down to plan episodes for this podcast, it's not my favorite thing to do in the world. I love shooting the podcast. I love recording them. I love all the other aspects of it. But to sit down and plan is really not my jam. I'm not really keen on it. But I have to force myself to do it. You know, you're not going to love every single part of everything that you do. But I have to remind myself as to why I'm doing this, right? If I remind myself that there's hundreds of thousands of people who listen to podcasts, that there's going to be people whose lives are going to change and remind myself as to why I'm doing this. Maybe there's someone out there that's really depressed. And if they listen to this episode, it's going to turn their life around, or at least they're going to feel better. If I can make somebody feel better, that makes it worth it. Now I'm looking at that, which is the opportunity versus the obligation of, I got to sit down and plan. Great. Beautiful. So remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing is the biggest key behind it. That is the opportunity. Why are you doing it? What are you doing it for? What is the life that you can create? How would your life change? How would other people's lives change? Find and focus on the opportunity and stop focusing on the obligations. So that's number one. Number two is to start mastering the small things. Figure out a way to get really good at the small things. If you've been a listener of my podcast for some time, you know I'm a really big believer in the small things, in, in just doing the small things right. Because success in life are not about some big, massive, cataclysmic event that make you successful or change your life completely most of the time. It's usually a bunch of little teeny tiny boring things that you do every single day. Success is usually not sexy. It's just a bunch of little teeny tiny tasks done every single day to make sure that you get it done. The best athletes in the world 
they're not the ones that have, you know, if you look at the, the, the best basketball players, they're not the one with like the best crossovers or the best anything. What it is, is they're the people who, who master the fundamentals of being a basketball player. If you look at a, a football player, if you look at a, a wide receiver, they've mastered the routes that they're running. They've mastered stopping on a dime and turning to the right. They've mastered every single aspect of it. If you look at a wide receiver, they'll go through and they'll shoot, or they'll catch hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of balls every single day. It's not even about all the other things. It's about how can I know that I am a, a football player? I'm, I catch these balls if I'm a wide receiver. I need to get make sure that it's so built into my programming into my hands and the muscles in my hands that no matter what happens my hands are going to catch the balls they fly at it it's about mastering the fundamentals and everything that you do success is doing the small things day in day out whether you want to or not so what are the small things you know if you think about that what are the small things required for you to get what you want in life let's figure it out that's number two master the small things number three is to design your environment I'll give you a great example. If you're trying to lose weight, have you designed your environment to help you lose weight? For me, I'll give you a great example. My body loves sugar. Everybody around me knows that if I have sugar, I'm going to want to finish. If I have a piece of candy, I'm going to want to finish the entire bag. I'll give you a perfect example. Last night, we were driving to go to dinner last night. I was in Dean's car and he's got kids. So he had on the right hand side, I was in the passenger seat. I reached down and he had some, some of those Welch's fruit chews, whatever those are. I had one of them because I was like, I haven't had one of these since I was a kid. I ended up having like 30 of those damn things. I can't have one because my brain's like, we got to go. I'm going to eat the entire bag. I know that. So I don't buy Skittles. I don't buy candy. If you come into my house, my environment is built around not allowing myself to eat candy because I know I'll finish the entire bag. So what do you do that you need to design your environment for? My environment is designed to make sure that I don't finish an entire bag of candy because I know I'm going to have a whole bunch of energy. It's going to drop and then I feel like crap for a few hours. So what do you need to do? You need to design your environment. What can you do? Do you waste too much time on the couch? Maybe you spend too much time on the couch. Take all of the cushions off your couch and throw them inside of your closet. You're not gonna be hanging out on your couch if there's no cushions, right? You can, what are you gonna do? Lay on the floor? Probably not. So then you try to go in, you're like, well, this doesn't look comfortable. I might as well go, go do what needs to be done. Do you waste too much time on social media? How can you design your environment? Put the phone in another room and don't allow yourself to use it for an hour. Do you have a roommate? Do you have a spouse? Do you have someone that you live with? Give them your phone and say, hey, don't give, you're not allowed to give me this phone for two hours. Even if I come and ask for it, say it's an emergency, don't let me get it. That's designing your environment. Andrew Huberman, who is the neurobiologist I had uh, about a month ago on the podcast, says he knows that he's addicted to his phone. So sometimes he's literally taken his phone and thrown it on top of the roof because you have to literally go and get uh, a ladder you got to get on top of the roof. That's ridiculous. So before you go and do all that stuff, he's like, oh, I know I threw it on the roof for a reason. I'm going to get done when I need to. Let's give you another example. Do you want to wake up and go for a run? Put your running shoes next to your sink. So when you sleep, you just wake up, you brush your teeth, you put on your running shoes and hell, go to sleep with your running clothes on so that you're literally ready to go. How can you design your environment to support the life that you're trying to create? Think about that. What do you need to do to design your environment to make it better? Do you want to meditate? What do you need to do to design your environment to meditate, to make meditation easier? Do you want to floss your teeth? What do you need to do to design your environment to floss your teeth? Design your environment to support you taking action towards whatever it is that you're trying to do in life. So that's number three. Tip number four to make sure that you have more discipline is to make your body move. This one you've heard me talk about if you've heard other episodes, your body will respond to whatever you make it do. Your body is the most incredible piece of machinery. Your brain, your body, all of that stuff is just so incredible. So what do you need to do to make your body move so that it starts creating the chemicals that it needs to? If, I'll give you a perfect example for me. I almost never want to work out. There's really most of the time I never want to work out. I'm like, damn it, I got so much other stuff I could do. I've got a business, I've got employees, I've got so many other things. In reality, I'm just making up excuses as to why I shouldn't work out. So then I have to force myself to work out. So before working out, I never feel like I want to work out. I'm never like, yay, today's leg day. Never, I don't know if I've ever said those words in my entire life. But then when I get done with the workout, my body has woken up. My body has responded. It has changed its chemical compounds inside of it. It's switched around from laziness to moving to motivated. And it's a lot easier to keep going at the end of a workout simply because my body has all of the chemicals in it to keep going. And a lot of times by the end of a workout, I'm like, why don't I just do a couple more sets? And I feel amazing after. What happened? I forced my body to create action. And in that action, chemicals change in my body, chemicals change in my brain and gave me more drive to keep going. Action creates more action. Inaction creates more inaction. So if you're not doing what needs to be done, you need to break the cycle of inaction. What do you need to do? 
Well, tip number five will help you. Tip number five is to count down and go. Don't allow yourself to think. Mel Robbins wrote a book on this called The Five Second Rule. And for me, it's funny that, that she wrote a book on this. I literally have been doing this for a really long time, but I used to count down from three. I would go three, two, one, and I would force myself to do whatever that thing was. When I was younger, I was really shy. And I knew that if I wanted to start making more friends and wanted to get some girlfriends when I was younger, I would have to figure out a way to start talking to people, right? And so what I would do is when I would start to think of what I needed to say, I would get really nervous. And I would think of the first word that I needed to say, and I would go three, two, one. And then I would say the word and I would force myself to say the word because forcing myself to say the word, it'd be really awkward if I just said the word and didn't say anything after and forcing myself to say the word would then at that point, I had to finish the sentence. It would force me to finish my sentence, whatever it is I was talking about. And I still do it. If I have a tough conversation with my girlfriend or a tough conversation with my employee, I still do it. Three, two, one. And then I say it. And I think this is ingrained in a lot of us as kids, where when we're in trouble and our parents want us to do something, they're like, you better go, you know, put your shoes away. And you're like, I don't want to do it. And they're like, three, two. And you're like, oh, shit, I don't know what happens at one. I got to go and run. Hopefully you didn't say, oh, shit, as a kid, but you know what I'm saying. But you're like, I, I don't know what happens when she gets to one or when she gets to zero. I might as well go run and do it. So I think it's kind of built into our brains. Like, I'm afraid to find out what happens at zero. So with that being built into us, it doesn't allow us to sit around and think. I've never heard someone just think their problems away. Well, I'm just gonna think them away and they're gonna disappear. It's usually some sort of action that's required to get you past it. The best thing to do is to count down. Three, two, one. And then just force your body to get up and move in some sort of way. That's tip number five. Tip number six, this is a good one. This is something I used to do with all of my clients, my one-on-one -on -one clients when I was coaching people for years. Ask yourself this question. How can I make this easier on myself? Whenever I would have my clients set goals, I realized that a lot of times they would set a goal and then they would mentally make it harder on themselves by starting to tell themselves all of the struggles, all the things that were coming up. And I was like, well, instead of finding, your, finding all the reasons why not and why it's gonna be hard, why don't you just find the reasons why it's gonna be easy? And in fact, why don't you just make it easier on yourself? So when you figure out what is it you need to do, to get life done and to get the disciplines you need to, ask yourself, how can I make this easier? Because life, success, happiness, joy, peace, all of those things, they're not difficult. We make them difficult. Why not find the easy route? Like we think that we have to struggle our way to success, that life has to be so hard. It doesn't have to be so hard. You can make everything in your life easier. And if you can make it easier, if it doesn't feel as hard, guess what you're more likely to do? You're more likely to take action. So ask yourself the question, how can I make this easier? And then tip number seven, get an accountability partner. Get an accountability partner that is on the same path, that's also working at something in their lives and talk every single day. Even if it's just through text message, say, hey, my goal is this. You know, if your goal, if we go back to the 50 phone calls to get you $100,000 for the year. My goal is 50 phone calls every day, Monday through Friday. I need you to check in on me every single day. Can you do that for me? And then every single day, this person checks in on you. Get an accountability partner. You hold them accountable to their goals. They hold you accountable to your goals. And with this accountability partner, if you really want to make it fun, if you don't hit your goal or you don't check in, there needs to be some sort of reprimanding or there needs to be something that you lose in some sort of way. So one thing that I've really found that motivates people, there's a lot of people that are politically charged nowadays or they believe very deeply in something. And so what I always say to people, you know, we have very advanced people that work with us and we literally say, and we did this inside of our Kaizen Mastermind, which is in our mastermind of, you know, advanced mastermind that we have for an entire year with entrepreneurs and leaders and, and managers and sales leaders and all that, is we match them up with an accountability partner. And I said, one of the things that I recommend is that you guys figure out something that they need to do if they don't hit their goal. And that something could be, and the example that I gave that everyone seemed to react to is donate a thousand dollars to the political campaign that you hate the most, right? So if I believe in X, whatever that is, and there's Y that's out there that is the exact opposite of it. If I don't hit my goal, if I don't do what I say I'm going to, if I'm, I don't do that thing I'm supposed to do, I actually have to donate a thousand dollars to Y's campaign. That motivates a lot of people. To donate to somebody that you don't like is a big motivation. Could be anything, could be something else. It could be that you have to give your accountability partner $1,000, give him a hundred bucks, even 200 bucks, even 50 bucks. I don't know what it is, whatever it is that's motivating for you. Where your accountability partner will then be motivated to keep you even more accountable. If they know if you don't hit your goal and they don't hear from you, they get 50 bucks, 
Do you think they're going to be checking in on you more often? Of course. So how can you bring in an accountability partner? You hold them accountable. They hold you accountable. And the goal is for you guys to up level each other's lives by checking in on each other and making sure that you get it done. Because ultimately, a lot of times you're not disciplined just because there's nobody checking in on you, just because there's no uh, nothing that you have to do if you don't hit that goal. So get an accountability partner is tip number seven. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Every single person has 24 hours in the day. No more. You'll never be given anymore. So either you get it done or you don't. And it's that simple. Either you make excuses or you figure it out. You get the life that you want to or you don't. There is nothing in between.